Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon BGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all doing well. We kicked off this week with the team that you can see on the screen in front of you right now. In yesterday's episode we've made a fine a few little tweaks from last week which you can see down in the description below just to recap the team for you guys at home. We've got the, the Manetric which is the mega of the team. We've got Eerie Impulse on there now which we've changed from last week from that Hidden Power Water that we did have. The Lunala we had Roll but we've replaced that with Wide Guard and we already have seen in, in yesterday's episode how useful that has been since the integration of that. Then we've got the Kyogre which is going to be our other restricted Pokemon, our primal of the team. Tapu Lele which is we've got Taunt on there, we dropped Magic Room, even though Magic Room was really good, uh, we've just put Taunt on there, so we've got that really fast Scarf Taunt, it gives us a better way of shutting down Xerneas rather than Magic Rooming and then still getting the Geomancy up, and then uh, Cortana, which is the Seed, and the Hydreigon, which has made the odd appearance here and there, and hopefully we can see a little bit more of it as we go on, as always the team is down in the description below if I haven't mentioned already, uh, there is Raw Pace, Poke Pace, try it out, let me know if you do try it out, and uh, let me know what you think of the team, because it's been it's been a lot of fun and like I said in yesterday's episode it's probably one of my favorite builds that I've put together in the Ultra series and I'm having a lot of fun with it so hopefully that does continue and without further ado we'll jump into today's episode as always guys if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to leave a like on the video do subscribe to the channel and leave your comments down below so we'll get over into our right screen, we'll pick some Muzak, uh, what are we going to go with today to kick us off? Uh, let's go Giovanni for a change, because we haven't had that in ages, so 17.55 rating, uh, going up against a 16.79 rated Japanese player, kicking us off today, so we'll get straight into team preview. It's one of those QR code teams, again! Okay, let's, uh, let's do this. Okay, so our first opponent today running a team of Rayquaza, Kyogre, Crobat, Celesteela, Incineroar, and Tapu Koko. So this looks very familiar to a team that I put together myself at the start of the format, um, combining the Rayquaza and the Kyogre. Just a really strong restricted combination here. Uh, we saw over the weekend at the Japanese Nationals how strong this combination uh, it is and, and what it's capable of with those top finishes in the top eight. Uh, you've got the crawl back there, it's going to provide tailwind support, torn support, his support, all sorts of shenanigans, and super fang that we need to watch out for. Celestia is going to provide another ground immunity to the team that you've got from the Incineroar and that type of core core there. So, Minetric going to be very good. Minetric something that I do want to lead here. Uh, it pressures the Crobat, the Celesteela, it's Intimidate, it helps against Rayquaza, and we pressure the Kyogre and put a little bit of pressure on with Lightning Rod before Mega Evolution on that Tapu Koko. Um, do I want Lunala though up top, or do I want Tapu Lele? Um, I might go Kyogre, I might go Lele in the back, and then Lunala way way back I think yeah do we want Cartana and Hydreigon here probably not nah nah I think that's a good selection so we'll go with these and kick into the first one today Ooh, so good luck to my opponent and guys and girls and everyone watching I have a little bit of an announcement to make because I've, I've cropped up in my brain this new idea so with with in mind that the VGC 19 season is going to be coming to a slow slow end uh, very soon we've got the US uh, North American International Championships happening on is it the 21st of June um, so after that that's like two weeks away so after that, what I want to do is make a uh, daily battle spot series a little bit more fun. So I've got an idea. I'm going to mention it uh, after after the episode. So stick around to the end of the episode and I will talk you through my idea. And it's going to be a lot of fun uh, going forward. And uh, we'll not cross over with this battle because we're going to see my opponent lead off with the Kyogre and the Incineroar. Um, so we will see that we are the, actually the faster Kyogre, which is a very nice sight to see. Um, now, do we switch in Lele to take a water spout? I think if we switch in Lele, we can probably damage the opposing Kyogre enough to have Lele survive. So, hmm, yeah. I'd really like to have Minetric Mega Evolve to do this, but I'd also really like to just be able to snipe the Incineroar here um, with this play. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch in Lele for Manetric 
and I'm gonna water spout and hopefully pick up the knockout on this unexpecting Incineroar, which I'm hoping goes for a fake out here into our Kyogre and do some decent damage onto the opposing Kyogre, so our Tapu Lele. I think, I feel pretty confident, I feel with enough damage, 25% damage to that opposing Kyogre, Lele should be able to take a water spout. Let's see. Incineroar is switching out. No. Okay, Rayquaza coming in. Uh, Lele should be able to take take an attack. I mean, the opposing Kyogre probably protect. Prote mm, no protect coming out. That's interesting. Um, oh, yeah. Without the rain boost, we're not doing as much damage. There's a water spout in return. Come on, Lele, hang in there. Come on. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's all fine. Now we've broke the sash on that potential Rayquaza. Um, so it is going to feel pressured right now, for sure. Um, it's whether or not we do we psychic, do we psychic the. Um, just feel like the requires a protect here. I really do. Um, and Lele is one of those things I want to keep for requires for later on in the game. Uh, where I could bring in Lunala, but then Lunala is going to take a ton of damage from the opposing car from the the Kyogre. Um, I mean, we still got Manetric we can bring in, right? I, I just want to check the Rayquaza more than anything, and I'm just going to go for a, another Water Spout. Um, I just don't. Oh, the Kyogre switching out, so Lele could have a little bit of a. Free ride. We're going to see, yeah, we're going to see extreme speed from the Rayquaza into our Lele, which is a nice play. We're going to be able to get a water spout into the the Coco, we'll get some damage there, and then we'll be able to get Manetric into the field. So it's not the end of the world. Um, I guess one of the things we could have done here would have been switch Manetric in for Lele, uh, or Lunala would have been the better one, obviously. Yeah. Poor old Lele, you did well. My good friend, uh, we're revealing that it is life or ray as well, so that's something we have to keep in mind. What's about doing really nice damage to the Coco? And now, like I say, we do get we do get the opportunity to bring him in Etric. The thing is now losing Lele, the Incineroar becomes a bit more of a problem with its support that it can provide with that fake out when it does come back onto the field. And you've got to imagine it does come back onto the field pretty soon. Um, hmm. Gonna mega evolve. And do a volt switch out onto the Rayquaza. Uh, yeah, I feel like I do. Um, but the one thing I could potentially do is just not. Not mega evolve. It's just the Rayquaza definitely feels pressured here, I think. The Coco. Do we just double protect? Just to see what my opponent's gonna do. We could fall into the trap of where they, they do switch out and Incineroar hits the field, which would be, yeah, which would be awkward because then, yeah, this is like the, the worst thing to do here because then we are in a bit of a situation where we can't, okay, well we can't like protect against the the fake out the next turn is what I'm trying to say. Now Kyogre can pr protect now, we definitely can. Um, and we don't have to Mega Revolve yet, so we are protected against. One of the things we could potentially do is just go for a Snarl and a Scald into the Incineroar. Because as long as we're not Mega Evolved, the Coco can't launch out these electric type attacks. Which is protecting us almost. It's just whether or not the Incineroar picks up on that and goes for an attack into the Manetric rather than the Fake Out. Let's see. What we're going to see. Well. I'm pleased we didn't Mega Evolve. Because we're going to see the, the Gigabolt Havoc from the Coco. But sorry, Lightning Rod denies that. Um, giving us a little bit of a special attack boost. We'll get the Snarl off. And we'll also get this uh, 
Scold off into the Incineroar as well. My opponent predicting that we Mega Evolve there and primarily didn't want to do that really, um, even though the Intimidate there would be very useful. Scald going to proc a Berry probably on this Incineroar. Hmm, no Berry, uh, just Darkest Lariat coming out. Yeah, now that's not ideal because now. Hmm. We really need to try and get Lunala in. Um, now I'm going to Mega Evolve. I'm going to Volt Switch out onto the Incineroar. And I'm going to protect. Do I protect Kyogre or do I Ice Beam? The Coco. So don't think you go for an Electric Type Attack now because I just feel like you're kind of done going for Electric Type Attacks. Um, and we could just play it safe and just protect Kyogre. Let's just protect Kyogre. I don't want to lose it. It's going to be our like most important thing, I think, going forward. So, Cinema, we're going to switch out. We're going to see Kyogre come in. Even better! Especially in the electric terrain. So, now let's Mega Evolve. And uh, we'll get Lunala in. I'm kind of hoping that our Shadow Shield doesn't get busted. Like, if the Coco protects here, that would be... That would be the best case scenario for us. Um, and you've got to imagine that you can kind of understand why, because the, the Minetric is pressuring that Protect, but we're not seeing that. We're just going to protect that Kyogre. Uh, we might see a Dazzling Gleam. Um, wow. The Electric Terrain up, Minetric is just a beast. Uh, but we'll get, we'll get Lunala onto the field. Um, Let's see, doesn't gleam yet, which makes sense. So we could have actually attacked there with Kyogre, it would have been a better thing to do. Uh, now our Shadow Shield is broken, which is not ideal. Um, the Rayquaza has got to come back in now. It has to. Yeah. But one of the things we could potentially do is, um, is Tailwind. Because with a Tailwind, um, Kyogre can kind of win this this game by itself. And I think what we could potentially do to try and make that happen is get Aminetric back onto the field with that Intimidate. So at least Lunala is not going down to Dragon Ascent. Because um, imagine you double into the Lunala here. Maybe. It's a Thunder. Oh, we avoid. There's a Dragon Ascent. We'll take this, and I mean, now we're in a, an amazing position. I wonder if a minus one Thunder would have taken down Manetric anyway. Probably in the electric terrain. Yeah. Um, yeah, now we're in such a good position. Um, Tailwind. Where we can Volt Switch out onto the Core Core uh, and just go for the Z move into that Rayquaza, really. Um, yeah. I mean, we do have to worry about extreme speed from the, the Rayquaza, for sure. Z-move, the Ray, and... I mean, we could just protect Minetric here. I just... Hmm. Extreme speed. Nah, I'm going to go for it, because I think if you do, then it means we get the Rayquaza. Oh! We just see a forfeit. Okay. I mean, probably from that point, we're all right, kind of closing it out. We just get the Kyogre onto the field, and there's not very much my opponent can do. They can extreme speed us, but they are intimidated, so it's not going to be doing that much. And I think with the rain up and everything, my opponent said the field's such low health, then Kyogre's going to be able to close things up, aren't they? So, very good game to my opponent, and a nice way for us to kick off today. So, we'll get into our next one pretty as quickly as possible. Right. See, you know what? If our rating was like 1800 by the end of the week, I'd be so happy. I'd be so happy. And I feel like this team kind of, it is justified with this team. It, it, I feel like it is that good. I really do. League tile defense for our next one. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. And uh, remember guys, 
Ah, oh, here we go. 1799 Japanese plays on the brink of 1800. Can we can we be the ones to stop him? So we'll get straight into team preview because it looks like he's got a, a, a really, really cool team. Okay, we'll be back in a second. Right, our next opponent is playing a team of Dialga, Fermosa, Kyoga, Tapukoko, Raichu of the Alolan region, and a Tornadus Ethereum form. So, uh, we've got the restricted combination Dialga, Kyoga. You're going to see definitely a Trick Room mode there, I would imagine, from that Dialga to support the Kyoga and the slow part of the team. Then you've got the super fast offensive side of the team with the, the Tapukoko, the Alolan Raichu, which has that ability to double its speed under the electric terrain. And then you've got things like Fermosa and tornadoes tornadoes having the pranks they're pretty fast anyway base 111 and then the fermosa which is just probably the fastest thing the fastest thing in existence and well it's not but it's pretty fast isn't it so um lele is going to be really good for us here um but it's been able to disrupt my opponent's terrain that we need to be able to do i think if we go lunala uh, Minetric is going to be good because of that electric core that my opponent has got. Uh, let's go Lele and Cortana. Do we want Cortana? Is really quite good against Dialga Kyoga, but I'm kind of leaning more towards Kyoga here because just the the general damage it will be able to do end game and soccer pits maybe a bit better. So let's see, let's see, let's see. It's going to be a good game, regardless. My opponent's obviously doing really well with this team. It's really interesting to see these teams so high ladder as well. Um, so there is there's a lot of scope to, to really be very creative in the Ultra Series. And I think that's one of the beauties about the Ultra Series. There's so much scope to just be, just play a lot of different things and a lot of different things are viable. And I mean, like, this team breaching the 1800s that my opponent's got kind of just shows that, you know, anything's kind of viable in this format you don't need to just stick to the standard stuff although the standard stuff works for a reason um be creative and see what you can do okay so we're going to see the raichu we're going to see the coco come up for my opponent and uh, we can guarantee tailwind here uh lunala not affected by the the uh the good old um Fake out, uh, Manetric. Do we want to just protect here? Lightning Rod will still be in effect. Um, Coco, what can you do? Dazzling Gleam, Taunt, I guess. Wouldn't be good. Um, but we'll not Mega Evolve just yet. We'll just sit on this Lightning Rod like we did in the previous game. Um, and it shows, I think, a different dimension to Manetric as well. You know, you've got this this intimidate support that you can go for here but you've also got this lightning rod as well that comes in so handy there's the taunt okay so yeah shutting down our tailwind which is fine which is fine which is fine it's fine it's fine it's fine um okay well what's my opponent going to bring in that doesn't like the z move nothing like literally nothing um i'm going to go for the z move into the coco and um do i mega evolve now do i mega evolve now probably mega evolve now i think yeah let's mega evolve now and go for a volt switch into the raichu break a potential sash hopefully the raichu doesn't have encore that would be pretty bad pretty bad for us um it does because it can lock us into that protect which we really don't want to see get the intimidate which might be useful, you know, you do see phys physical variants of both these Pokemon. Electro Web coming out, okay. That's fine. Breaks the Shadow Shield. Hopefully, you don't see a Z move from this Coco. Into Lunana. Let's not see that. Uh, we've got the Volt Switch, break potential Sash there, do some decent damage. We'll get Lele in, just in case we do see a um, Z move, because we want to we wanna weaken it. And I think without the terrain, probably take it with Lunala. Which I mean, we get our Z move um, into the Coco. Yeah, Z move time. Here we go. Ooh, it's going to be the Twinkle Tackle, though. Uh, I feel like we take this um, with Lunala. Yeah. Uh, it's not a very powerful Z move, especially when it's not super. Like, when it's super effective, it does a job, but when it's not so super effective, it. I uh, like Lele isn't going down to this. Um, no. No, no, no. 
So we will return. Lunala's still in good shape. We are taunted, obviously, and we'll have to cut this and come back when we hit into this core corn. But we know it's not a salt vest, so no, it's not Sash. We'll be able to pick up the knockout. So we'll be right back and into the Coco. A bit overkill, maybe. We could have just Sai shocked it, which would have probably picked up the knockout. But, you know, in hindsight, you know, with anything coming in um, on my opponent's team, we'll be able to pick up the knockout if the Coco did switch out. We've removed the terrain, so that's fine. The Raichu's probably in. Um, Moonblast range now, so we can Moonblast that slot. We will outspeed it. We can Psy Shock the Tornadus uh, and Moonblast the Raichu. And probably see its tailwind here from the Tornadus, which isn't ideal. But we can, we can live with that. We can live with that. Um, I wonder if the tornadoes is sashed then. Hmm. I would have. Yeah. I would have thought that the Raichu would have been the thing that would have been sashed, especially when it's something that you lead all the time. Right? Moonblast should be enough to pick up the knockout onto it. Yeah. And then hopefully a taunt wears off. Taunt wears off, so if Kyogre comes in now, then we've we've got access to Wild God, which is which is what we really want. Yeah. Okay. Kyogre. Does Kyogre protect though? It's got to be scared of the Psy Shock. You know, it has to. It really does. Uh, we're gonna have to deal with Hurricane as well, obviously from the opposing Tornadus. Now the Tornadus knows that we've got Tailwind, so it's likely that they go Tailwind. Um, I just think at this point you protect your Kyogre. Just if we don't kind of protect against the Wide God, then it could be in a bit of a tricky, 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 tricky situation. Hmm. I think we've got to double the Tornadus. What have we got in the back to deal with this Tornadus? Um, yeah, I think we've got enough to deal with the Kyogre. I'm going to have to double the Tornadus here. We need to get rid of it more than anything. Like, we have to. Yeah, there's the Tailwind. There's no Protect from the Kyogre, so we'll lose both of these targets, but... <sighs> it's not ideal at all, I know, but... Oh dear. Oh, the electro web. You fool. Oh, we've lost this now. We've lost this. Yeah, the electro web. I totally forgot about the electro web. And now we just lose, I think, because Minetric needs like a double, triple protect. <sighs> hmm. We need definitely hurricane into the Kyogre. Hmm. Now what about we're gonna take Hurricane Mortis about damage. We've got a Scald. There's no way. And like, I can't. Like, we can try and get the Protect with Minetric, but otherwise, it's not gonna work. Ah, that's such. Ah, I'm so I'm so stupid for doing this. Yeah. It would have been a way clearer way of, of approaching this end game. Um. Ah, that's so annoying. Because we kind of like if we've just yeah if we wide guarded that previous turn then it would have been so so different because then we keep our wide guarder and prevent that cargo from being able to do the damage that it's doing now uh, we're likely going to go down to another water spout um well both targets are i don't know if there's anything it can do I don't really feel like at this point because of like it's my own mistake like protecting out of this mistake to try and get around it um, it's more about like looking back at and identifying where we could have really went 
a little bit differently with this one uh, if we've just been a bit more mindful of what had happened previous in the match um, the electoral web is definitely something um, hmm I mean we could scald and try and protect again yeah get a double protect there's no way we get and we get a double protect I don't know if we get a triple protect though and it's whether or not we can take this water spout from the opposing cargo which I don't really think we can nah nah so we need we need even more we need like I think the tailwind still hmm and I don't even know if we can take an origin pulse from here so they've got let's see yeah one turn so we need a triple protect I've never done this on a recording before so if we get it amazing if not then now nah, we don't get it what's about very good game to my opponent and they're gonna move on to the 1800s which you know Ah, uh, that could have been avoided from ourselves. It definitely could have been avoided. It's a bit of a shame that we're ending up like that today um, because that is just a massive oversight. And it's so... It, the message, the underlying message, I guess, to, to kind of carry over to you guys when you're going in is just be mindful of everything that's happened in the game and don't kind of get too sucked into the moment when you think, I'm making a bit of progress here. Um, let's just carry on with what we've got out in front of us just make sure you're taking that step back every time every turn just thinking over everything just take your time you've got time to do it so just make sure that you're making use of that time when you when you can because if we'd done that we would have realized that Kyogre would be attacking before Lunala Lunala would have went down to a water spout and then maybe that we would have weighed that up into what our decision was eventually you know and because of that oversight we lose Lunala lose Lele the match becomes very difficult very quickly for us and it just flips around like that and it's so quick in Pokemon so just being able to to remember that going forward is the big thing so I mentioned earlier on in the episode uh, I've got some ideas going forward for our daily battle series. So one of the things that I think of uh, when I think of VGC19 is it's coming to an end. We've got Worlds. Now I've played really quite seriously in the Ultra series, which is great. Good examples and things like that. But for the majority of you guys out there, you might be going to world. But aside from that, uh, the, the season's kind of wrapped up nearly. And we don't really have any information on what's going to be happening next season. Um, so what I want to try and do on the channel is make things a bit more fun. So, an idea I've got is a Road to Ranked Roulette series, which I'm going to try and replace the Daily Battle series with, but we will not be replacing it entirely because we will still be doing VGC 19 content, Ultra Series content, but the premise of it, how it works, there'll be lots of rules and regulations around everything, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And basically what I'm going to do is a week prior to starting this, I'm going to put a poll up on the channel and it'll not be a poll, it'll be a, 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 just a comment and I want you guys to reply to it saying what Pokemon, you nominate one Pokemon for me to play in the following week's episodes team and at the end of the week on Friday I'll make a video of all of the comments each and every one of you have made suggesting a Pokemon put your name next to that Pokemon and we'll put you into a big roulette reel and then we will pick Pokemon number one through six to the team that I'll be using next week which will end up I'm imagining something absolutely bonkers crazy and from those six that we nominate we'll obviously do the two restricteds we'll keep them separate to everything else and then the four other ones so you guys will have the pick of what Pokemon you'd like to see on the channel and I will construct a team around that so that's why we're calling it Road to Ranked Roulette and we'll see how far we can climb up the ladder with these wild teams that probably make no sense at all but I think it'll be a lot of fun and uh, like I said there'll be lots of little rules and things in between that and I think it'll carry us right through the summer and it'll be something different that I haven't seen at least on YouTube before and definitely not on a VGC Road to Ranked series but it involves you guys it's going to be a lot of fun it'll be entertaining I can not doubt about that it will be entertaining so let me know your thoughts on that guys and uh, I'll hopefully start to put things together and if it's something you'd like to see then 
brilliant because I feel like until we know what's happening with next season, competitively, things are kind of settling down. So it'd be nice to kind of keep momentum going on the channel and kind of make maybe a new series that we can carry forward just on the side when we get back into things in 2020 season, which is coming up very quickly, only a few months away now. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I will look forward to reading your comments about the new ideas, about the teams today, and we'll be back for more um, Battle Series episodes tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.